Here, I'll be going over how Photo 51 helped in the discovery of the DNA structure. We know Photo 51 is one of the most important pieces in the history of chemistry. The technique used to obtain the image is X-ray crystallization, where X-rays are directed at the sample, and the diffraction of the X-rays by the electrons of the molecules of the sample are recorded by a camera. The image of B-DNA taken by Rosalind Franklin and one of her graduate researchers, Raymond Gosling, at King's College in 1952 was groundbreaking, and it supplied Watson and Crick with all the information they needed to propose their model of DNA. We've seen this picture many times, but what exactly does it tell us? So first we see the presence of a diamond-shaped outline. The lighter nature of the diamond on the top and at the bottom of the film showed Franklin that the DNA bases faced the inside of the helix, whereas the phosphate groups faced the outside. The most glaring part of this image would be the appearance of an X-shape in the center of the diamond. This X-shape indicates that DNA holds a double helical shape. Linus Pauling, who previously predicted DNA to bear a triple helix, was proved drawn by Watson and Crick, who succeeded largely thanks to the data held in this image. The X shape consists of several dashes. Each dash represents an atomic repeat, or in this case, a nucleotide. Franklin could deduce the distance between each nucleotide base by measuring the distance between the dashes. She was able to tell that the distance between each nucleotide is 3.4 angstroms. The estimation of the number of bases per turn has to do with where the most intense spots lie, which is at the top and at the bottom of the diamond. These are the 10th layer line of reinforced waves, indicating that each turn of the helix consists of 10 bases yielding a 34 angstrom rise per turn. There would be an expected 4th layer line that appears to be missing. This indicates that DNA is asymmetrical and it provided a clue to the presence of a minor and major groove of DNA. The distance between the dashes, as well as the angle of the X, helped identify the, the radius of the DNA helix to be 10 angstroms and therefore the diameter to be 20 angstroms. Finally, the DNA diffraction spacings from Rosalind Franklin's section in her 1952 Medi King's Medical Research Council report were shown in quantitative measurements. These measurements were consistent with a monoclinic C2 space group, a group that Crick happened to be familiar with from his previous research. This hinted to Crick the presence of parallel and anti-parallel strands in DNA and it gave him the edge over Franklin, who was unfamiliar with the consistency of these measurements. Finally, these are the sources of what I used to complete the video, and thank you for listening.